<clears throat> um, yeah, so I just want to uh, like throw a video together because um, I've been learning about how to take these guys apart when I replace this trigger. Um, so yeah, I thought you might think it's cool. Um, but yeah, so I got this new trigger in, which there's no longer that slop that the uh, that the one that came with it had. Um, and so this is like a this is a Wilson Combat adjustable trigger. Um, and I guess once I get it out, I'll show you uh, kind of what that means. Um, yeah, so these things are really cool when you take them apart. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and just start doing that. So take this guy out, check it. Um, yeah, so this guy we start with. Bushing, put that in the tub, and then we'll build strip, put that in the tub, off the side. <clears throat> All right, so this is where it starts kind of getting interesting. Um, Let's see if I can remember how to do this too. I've done this a couple times now, but so we want to drop the hammer and then there's this pin right here, which this is the only pin that takes any kind of force to get out. And I just do this, which I'd use a, I would use a draft if I had one, but I don't. And you kind of get to there and you do it from this left side because this side is like rounded and this side has like a, a dimple and then I'll address this out using the edge of the table All right. so that goes out and we'll put that pin in the tub all right um and then we go, we go half cock, and that allows us to pull the safety out like that. It's the safety, and then we can take that. Safety is also the pin for the grip safety, so that guy also comes out. Um, and then the other two pins that we're looking at taking out are the hammer pin and then the, I think this is called like the sear pin um, and all these pins are you know they shouldn't take any force to um, actually not take that back we're not going to do those pins yet we're going to remove the mainspring housing here that guy which is it can come apart come apart more but don't need to do that for this um, okay now we'll do these two pins. So now you can see that the, the hammer is completely loose because it there's a spring right here that this plunger goes into. Okay, and then we'll do these two pins from the side. Start with the hammer pin. See that just pushes right out real easy. And this has a rounded face on the right hand side and then a countersink like flathead on the left hand side right, and then the hammer just dropped right out um, and then now we can take so this is the um, I guess you call it this like a three-way leaf spring but the left the left part is the sear spring the middle part the middle leaf is I guess you would say like the um, sear release spring which you'll see the two parts there in a second. And then the third one over here is for the grip safety. But that guy just comes right out like that and just hooks into this slot on the bottom. Um, and then if you've got like a trigger adjustment, like if you want to change the weight of the trigger, um, you would go to a gunsmith and then they would just literally take these and they'd start bending it by hand and do it by feel. Um, but obviously I'm not going to screw around with that because I would probably ruin it. Um, but you can take it out and that kind of stuff and not have to worry about it. Just don't start bending it. All right, so last pin pushes right out nice and easy. 
then these two parts can just like fall out the sear and the what I think is the sear release. So I'm calling this the sear release right here, and I'm calling and this is the sear. But this kind of you know, if we're looking at the gun this way, this kind of sits in here like this. Where the sear just sits like a saddle, like using the the sear release is like a saddle and just sits on top of it. Um yeah. Alright. And then the trigger is almost out. It can't come out quite yet. It's being stopped by the magazine cache. And this one's a little tricky, so you gotta get a screwdriver. And there's this uh flathead screw right here. And the screw is just retaining retaining the whole, you know, so there's like a spring in there. And it's retaining the, you know, this little assembly right here um, in a slot. You know, so the screw, as you turn the screw, it rotates a little, um, uh, what would you say, like a, like just a little, little piece of metal, like a little piece of metal that rotates in a, like a circular slot. Um, so you kind of just got to push a little bit to take the force off that uh, piece that's in the slot. You kind of just got to wiggle it into a couple different positions to get it. It should be easy. So now I got it easy. It's turning nice and easy. And then boom, it just pops right out like that. All right, so we can take this out. You can see that here's the screw. And then it's just got like this little lever that rotates with the screw that rides in a corresponding slot right on the inside here. Um, and yeah, and so then there's a spring that's built into this. All right, so that guy's over there, and then now the trigger can come all the way out. Um, so yeah, when I got this trigger, it was actually it was actually about ten thou too tall, so I had to I had to sand down the top and a little bit on the bottom, and then I still had some trigger slop, but that's where these little adjustable tabs come in um so the screw is for over travel adjustment so the trigger doesn't over travel as you push it back or as you pull on it, as you pull the trigger um and then these little tabs are for pre-travel adjustments so that's how much the trigger can come forward and i just had to just had to bend these out so slightly you probably can't even see it but that gets rid of the slop um but yeah so that's all the parts you know it's maybe you know 10 to 15 parts that all kind of go together and then this is all the way down to the frame pretty much you know the only other thing they can take apart more is the mainspring housing here um but i'm not gonna do that um and then this is a really good way to like get it in a good place they can clean and i need to clean this but um i think i'm gonna do that later all right <clears throat> so let's see if i can go back together here so we're gonna take this guy and it kind of fits in this little raceway Right there, boom. Um, and then we'll get a magazine catch. This guy, which I find is trickier to put back in, but you just got to be patient with it and not put. You don't need any force to turn the screw as long as you got it. That little lever that's on the screw right in the slot should just turn nice and easy. So you got to just play with it a little bit. There we go, I got it. Boom, and it just snaps into place. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right, so now we'll do the sear and sear release, which I find on, on this gun, which I don't know if this is true for all, but I find, so you probably can't see, but the sear, it's got these, it's got these two little tabs on the bottom. And these two little tabs go on either side of this little, you know, I guess you'd say another tab on the sear release, but these two tabs need to sit on top of, need to sit on top like that. They don't want to fall down and be at the same level. Um, I put it back together like that and the grip safety wasn't working. It was actually kind of dangerous because the grip safety, like you'd pull the trigger a little bit and you kind of feel the grip safety engage, but then if you pulled harder, it would, 
it would release the hammer. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but once I kind of readjust, you know, took it apart again and made sure that the sear, these two tabs of the sear here were sitting on top of this wider tab of the um, sear release, then everything worked out fine. Uh, but so this guy is coming on the bottom here and I just kind of like to drop it in from the top like that. You want to make sure that's coming out of the top of the follower. It's coming out of the top there. And then I like to take the sear and then you just drop it in. Boom. And it pretty much always lands right on top where it should be. And you want to make sure that the those two tabs on the sear are on top of the single tab of the sear release. Um, and then you can also see here how the back of the trigger bow, back of the trigger bow right there is pushing on that larger tab of the sear release. So that's all looking good. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to get that small pin that holds this assembly together, which is right here. Um, and just put light pressure, and then I like to pull the trigger, and that kind of gets that in there. Boom, there it goes. That pin's in. That pin can just fall out now, too, because there's no tension on any of those parts putting friction on the pin. Um, so... We want to get the rest of it in there. Um, and next, what we'll do is the is the mainspring here. We'll just sit that guy on top. Make sure we get it in that slot in the back. Make sure our sear is still over our sear release. Looks like it is. Yeah. All right. So now. We will like to put this guy in here, the mainspring housing, just to put, it puts pressure on the spring here. So that keeps it, everything kind of in place. Um, but I won't put the pin in that holds it. I'll just kind of get it there like that. All right, that's still looking good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pull the trigger here just to test it a little bit. Yeah, okay. All right, and actually lie, I'm going to put the pin in for the mainspring housing. Get that hole lined up, come back here. All right, so this is the rounded side right here, so I'm gonna put the dimple side in. And this is also gonna require a little bit of, oh, that just dropped in nicely. A little bit of a tap. this just to get away from the grips and that looks nice and flush and then double check our sear that's looking good all right so now we want to work on the hammer pin and the safety pin and we'll do the hammer first so we want to make sure that this goes down into the plunger of the mainspring housing. If I can get it in there, a little bit of help if I turn it around. All right. So here, what we're going to do is we want the hammer forward. We want to get our pin out. Put our hammer forward. Make sure we're. The plunger is in, there we go. It's contacting that mainspring. There we go. And then we want to pull the trigger and that will line up the hole of the hammer and the hole of the frame. And that'll help us drop this guy in here if I do it right.
There we go. It's like right hand is the best way to do it. Boom, got it, cool. Um, and so now we can see, now we have tension on the hammer. We don't wanna, we don't wanna release this here because that can damage the sear, um, or at least release it without any kind of resistance, so we'll do that. All right, I also learned too that the half cock position is actually a safety feature, so if the hammer is all the way back and then somehow drops, without any of the trigger mechanisms being pulled, the half cock will catch it and keep it from um, uh, hitting the firing pin. Um, but, so we're gonna drop that guy. All right. And sear's still looking good. And you can see here that we have no, you know, uh, pre-travel trigger slop, which is what I was going for when I replaced it. Um. <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to work on the safety and the grip safety. So here we're going to just take the grip safety and there's a little tab here on the bottom that's going to go behind the mainspring housing. And then this tab here needs to go above this uh, the far right hand part of the spring. So that's just going to go over top like that. And then this to get this safety in, we want to go, I believe, back into half cock. And we'll push that guy in. And then the, the this plunger right here, we'll want to push that out of the way as we push the safety in. So I'm going to use this Allen key for that. Get that lined up. And if I just come in over the top like this, push that out of the way. See, boom, that's working. And we got <clears throat> full range of motion here on the grip safety. So when I did it wrong that one time, there's very little movement in the grip safety. Um, so I knew something was wrong there, but got that working. Um, now we just reverse the field stripping part. Uh, just got lined up. tool for this but I'm lazy just like use my fingers boom all right no slop trigger feels good yep so that's that